Hi, this is Aaron at Power Papaholic, and I am talking to Stephen Butler of Smash Palace. How are you today, Stephen? I'm doing well, Aaron. How about you? Good. Uh, let You have a new album out called Some Kind of Magic. It's a little bit of a different sound than your last album, Do It Again. I think, um, you know, particularly on the track Haddon Town, you have more of a California sound, like McGuinn and, and Tom Petty, as opposed to, say, uh, Ray Davies or the Raspberries influence that I've heard uh, from Smash Palace in the past. What made you decide to change that sound a little bit? And tell me a little bit about how the band has changed from uh, the past as well. Um, you know, it's it's interesting with it, being a songwriter with my brother Brian. Um, I don't think we really necessarily set out the sound one way or another. Or let's change direction. We just we just write, and whatever comes out, we make a judgment call if we like it or not, and that's pretty much the end of the story. I mean, I, sometimes we'll be writing something, and we'll go, "Well, this this is weird. It's not going to work with what we do in our records." But you know, a lot, oftentimes, if we like the melody and we think it's a song of merit, uh, we we do it. All right, cool. I mean, I've also noticed the last two albums, both. Uh, some kind of magic and do it again were kind of short almost you know this one's in like EPs basically yeah, um, yeah well the, the last one was called extended play oh that's right it's, I'm sorry yeah, yeah. Do, do it again play. was a full length one uh, so do it again I think 2012 then we did a live CD in 2013 yep extended play was last year and then uh, some kind of magic is this year so um, we have a new band lineup so I got uh, David Osikinen and Fran Smith. Uh, those guys also play in the Philly famous band, the Hooters. So uh, yeah. they're a great rhythm section. And, uh, and recently we just added Cliff Hillis on uh, second guitar and, and vocals too. So it's, uh, it's a really great band, musicianship-wise and creatively. And they're, and they're great pals and everything, too. I mean, we see each other all the time. So uh, I think that is definitely influenced the sound of the music. Yeah, it's really crisp, really clean as well. I mean, do you like the shorter EP format better than, like, the full, full length, or it's just the amount of songs that you're happy with to record? Uh, no, I think we like doing EPs these days because the music industry has completely changed, and people are moving away from buying entire albums and they're doing single downloads of the, the one particular or two particular songs you happen to have as a single. So it was this thing of like, well, do we want to wait every 18 months to, full, to put out a full length CD and, you know, put 12 songs on it and get one song that gets downloaded and people are interested when they hear it on the radio and whatnot and the other 11 kind of languish. Right. So we just thought this was a way to get out music more often rather than waiting. And um, any, anyhow, oh. it's my strategy right now. It could change tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it's uh, it works for me. I, I think it's uh, it's awesome. Um, one another question I was going to ask um, is basically your debut album from 1985. I've noticed it was it's never been reissued on CD. Do you have any control or influence on getting it re-released? The first Smash Palace CD, which came out on Epic Records in 1985, has not been reissued, is not available to my knowledge on Spotify or iTunes. I have no idea why. Uh, when I contacted their legal department probably about 10 years ago, uh, they wanted a, a very high price to get the master back if we wanted to re-release it ourselves. And they actually had, uh, there was another record label that deals with 80s reissues. And they were saying, too, that, you know, Epic Records just wanted this exorbitant price for the master. So I don't know what the deal is. And the band that I was in before um, Smash Palace was Quincy. Right. That, that Quincy record finally finally just came up on uh, the digital download sites so you can get that now oh okay great 
All yeah, right, I didn't know it, that. it might. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's like some. It, it has to pass so maybe so many years because the Quincy record was from 1980. The first Smash mm-hmm. Palace record's 85. Right. So maybe something will happen. Okay. Well, we can we can all hope. <laughs> you bet. All right. Uh, uh, another uh, question that I I wanted to ask is you know other than the Beatles, who else would you consider your biggest influence on the guitar? Um, I would, you know, I'm a big classical guitar fanatic, so, uh, you know, I practice hours a day, it's kind of like my hidden thing, so I'd have to say Andre Segovia, but that probably won't relate to any of the power pop fans out there, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it has, playing classical guitar has had a huge influence on the way I play guitar, um, and just the, my understanding of the guitar. All but, right. And of course, you know, look, if I had to name, name guitar players off the top of my head, you know, I'd have to say Eric Clapton. You know, I, I cut my teeth listening to uh, the first, uh, well, the only, one and only Blues Breakers record he made with John Mayle. That's what, that was like my guitar Bible as a, as a, as a kid. Awesome. awesome. Well, uh, also, um, I guess I was going to ask, you know, do you have a favorite guitar that you like to play? Um you know, whenever you're in concert or when you're recording, is it the same kind of guitar? Um, one of my main guitars that I use for recording a lot is I have an Epiphone Casino, which I really like, and I love the sound of it. Uh, I got a, a Telecaster that I love. And when I play live, I have uh, an SG that I use, just because it's um, uh, the Casino has a semi-hollow body, and it, and it feeds back and howls a lot of time on stage. Uh, so the the SG has a solid wood body, and it's pretty sturdy in that respect. Cool. So, what is next for Smash Palace? Now that you are you working on a uh, new EP with this new group? Um, not right now. Right now, we're more concentrated on d- doing shows. Um, we got a we had a video that just came out. We're work- we'll be working on a new video. And we kind of really, our process usually is, is we work for six months, put the record together, you give it to your record label, it takes three to four months just to get into the distribution queue at Sony, you know, so right. that takes time. And then you, you know, get the record out and you do it all over again. So I, I would imagine probably within the next month or two, Brian and I will just get back to carving out some new tunes. Cool. Uh, you know, one thing I did want to mention. Yes. That, that's different about this last record is we had we actually used an outside producer for the first time in thirty years. Wow. Okay. So that will have a guy by the name of William Whitman, who's a, a Grammy-winning producer who came in and uh, he had I had put a note up on Facebook that we were going to start a new record, and he messaged me and said, "Hey, I want to I want to work with you guys." Cool. So yeah, it was it was a blast, and he's extremely talented, and it was very <laughs> actually it was a lot less stressful to have somebody else make the decisions. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, where are you going to be playing live in the uh, near future? Is... Yeah, we uh, we just played last week at the at the Ritz Theater in South New Jersey. Then we're going to um, play in Phoenixville. In uh, which is outside of Philadelphia in November. We have a date in Berlin, New Jersey in uh, December. Then we're going to play uh, in Delaware at the World Cafe in, I think, January. Then World Cafe in Philly. Oh, all right, great. So, yeah, we have a bunch of dates that are coming up. And, and they, can, they can check out those dates on your website. What's the URL? Yeah, uh, it's smashpalacemusic.com. But I recommend people do Smash Palace Music or Facebook dot com slash Smash Smash Palace Music because the Facebook thing is a lot more up to date and uh, interactive. And so if you're following where we're playing, you can you can find out really quickly. Oh, all right, great. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. Uh, appreciate the time you take to uh, to talk to me. And uh, everyone definitely get uh, Smash Palace, Some Kind of Magic. It's a great little album. Um, no no duds here. Every song is awesome. Uh. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> and uh, 
you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll all get to see you live. That would be great. All right, take care, man. Thank you, Aaron. All right, bye-bye. Thanks.